Yeah, we're getting ready to go on live with my friend, and we're going to be talking about an awesome topic today. Um, 30 seconds on this song. 30 seconds, okay. We've got 30 seconds. We're going to be talking about an awesome topic today. We're going to be talking about strategies versus um, schemes. Mm -hmm. And that is awesome as a topic because we're going to learn some things today. Yes. And hopefully you all will learn. I'd like for you all to um, make sure that you all make comments in the comment section and let us know. Can you turn it up a little bit so they can hear it on? Welcome to Life, Hope, and All Things Kennedy. Life Building Voice of Wisdom. We're happy that you're here. So we're going live now. Let's discuss topics such as relationships, parenting, physical and mental health, and all the finances and life lessons. Thank you for being here today on Life, Hope, and All Things Kennedy. Good evening, good evening everyone, and welcome to All Things Kennedy. I am so excited, so excited about the show today. I've got my friend Trish here with me, and you know, we have been talking about this for a while, about getting together, um, you know, doing some ministry together, talking about um, the Word of God, and actually doing some spiritual warfare on that old devil. So today we're going to whoop him upside the head. We are going to um, talk about some strategies and some things that we all can do. Now, you know, um, for the past probably six months or so, I've been talking about can you see your future? And how can you see your future? You have to apply some strategies and some wisdom from the Word of God, from um, our wisdom keepers who are the adults who've been there, done that, um, from some life lessons, um, from things that we have to learn, some new things we have to learn. And so there's so much to be learned um, in terms of what we can do to improve our life. One of the things we don't want to do is come to the end of this year, 2019, talk about all the things I wish I could have, should have done, yes. because I'm giving you some strategies. We're talking about some things that will help you to determine what's going to happen in your life. So we want you to apply those things. Um, I had the opportunity this past weekend to participate in the Let's Talk Youth Conference. Mm -hmm. And we talked about some strategies uh, for our youth. Yeah. So today, what I want to talk about is expand that topic a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, we can give the, the adults some strategies and some information to talk to their young, uh, youth about, as well as hopefully some youth will be listening or they'll watch the replay or parents let your youth watch the replay. Um, we talked about, I had a poster. Mm -hmm. The poster had on it some pictures. One of the pictures was an apple. Okay. The apple said, um, because you are the apple of his eye. Yes. Then there was another um, picture that had an apple with an arrow through it, mm. which means that we are a target. Yes. And the enemy is desiring to take you out. Ooh. Then I had another um, picture that um, had three things. It had an um, egg, a carrot, and a tea bag. Okay, the egg symbolized the fact that when it drops in hot water, mm -hmm. it hardens. Mm -hmm. And so some people get hardened in life when yes. situations come their way. Yeah. Then the egg, when it's dropped in hot water, gets soft. Some people get soft, complain, can't do anything, get incapacitated. Because um, nobody likes mushy carrots except babies. And then the <laughs> Bible tells us, you know, in the Word about... Um, the spiritual food, mm -hmm. you know, yes. babies eat baby food, That's but right. we have meat. That's right. So nobody really likes mushy carrots. That's right. But the desire is for us to be like a tea bag, because mm -hmm. when you drop a tea bag in hot water, it infuses that water. It makes a difference in that hot water, mm -hmm. so that it impacts the environment rather than the environment impacting it. Exactly. So wow. we need to be like that tea bag. Yes. And the other thing I said, there was um, a pair of 3D glasses mm -hmm. and saying that we need to be able to see the enemy in 3D. Mm. That's good. We need to see his, we need to know his devices, which is the word of God tells us. Mm -hmm. But 
his um, tactics are to what? Distract us. Distract us. Get us discouraged mm -hmm. and distance us from God. Mm -hmm. So we're going to expand that conversation mm -hmm. today. And you said something today that was really, really um, struck me. Um, maybe you can remember how you had it, but it said something about um, God is a str strategist and the enemy is a schemer. So my guest um, is Patricia um, Chambliss. Cabinus. Cabinus. Davis. Davis. <laughs> I don't know where I got Chambliss from. Cabinus Davis. And because um, I always call her Trish, so I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I don't think Coach about Trish. it. Coach Trish. That's, yeah. that's my. Um, so that's she's going to talk about um, a quote that she made today. I don't know what it's doing. It's frozen. Hmm. That's the deal again, but we've got it right here. <laughs> okay. So she's going to, but she's going to talk about um, the statement that was so impactful to me today. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us again what that statement was that you made about God being a strategist, God having strategies and the enemy um, having schemes? Yeah, that was something that the Lord revealed to me um, while we were, uh, last week we were reading the word of God, just talking about um, Jesus going, getting ready to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. And we know that when he was heading to the cross that he was really going in our place. Right, right, <laughs> right. right. He was. Mm -hmm. He was going in our place. Mm -hmm. And there was, there was a strategy, mm -hmm. uh, which I call uh, the chess move of love. Because that's what love does. Mm -hmm. Love strategizes to deliver us out of something, right. something that's 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 oppressing us, mm -hmm. something that's suppressing us, and something that's uh, like you were saying earlier, something that's trying to stress or trouble or cause anxiety or fear or worry. Mm -hmm. um, and so and so when we were reading, I think it was in Matthew, um, I forgot the chapter, but as we was reading it. Um, you could see the enemy, mm -hmm. and what I thought at the time was strategizing to get Jesus caught so that, so that he could have the Son of God killed because he did not know if the Son went once the Son of God was killed, mm -hmm. he didn't know that he would rise again, right. and that we would have the power mm -hmm. to rise again. Mm -hmm. So, so while I was sharing that. Yesterday, the Lord brought it back to my remembrance, and he said to me, no. He said, I strategize, but the enemy schemes. Mm. He schemes to bring us into bondage. That's rich. He, he, yeah, he schemes to, to cause us to be distressed or discouraged. Mm -hmm. I heard you say that word, discouragement. Mm -hmm. Discouragement, disappointed, mm -hmm. um, uh, in a place of anxiety and mm -hmm. fear and worry. And so he says, but I strategize to bring you out. And so right. I love your introduction because in your in introduction, you were talking about how vital it is for us to get to a point where we're on meat, that no one likes mushy, mushy. carrots. Right. Right. But we like meat, but everybody can't handle meat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? right. So, so it's, it's imperative that we understand that the word of God can go in and it can get us prepared for me. Right, right. The, the Bible tells us that the word of God is alive. Mm -hmm. It's living. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Right, it is. It pierces to the dividing asunder of things that are soulish, mm -hmm. things, that, things that are not profitable to us. Mm -hmm. And it gets us prepared for things that are right. profitable. Right. And so we do need the meat of the word. We need the meat of the word. <laughs> yeah. We need the meat. And he's the only one who can get us to that place where we can digest it. With his strategies. Now, yes. listen, I heard I, I wrote some um, definitions because okay. I thought that was, that was um, applicable. One said that a strategy is a plan of action to achieve a major overall aim. <laughs> It says, the art of planning and directing overall military operations, that's our spiritual warfare, Yes. and movements in a war or a battle, mm. which is often contracted with tactics, which is the art of disposing armed forces in order of battle and organizing operations, especially during contact with an enemy. Whoo, come on. See, that sounds See? like... Yeah. <laughs> See, but this is the one I really like from Miriam Webster. It said, okay. it's the science and art of employing the political, mm -hmm. economic, mm -hmm. psychological, mm -hmm. and military forces of a nation 
to afford the maximum support for policies in peace or war. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Look at God. Because <laughs> isn't that what God does with his um, strategies? Because basically, you know, the enemy is trying to get in, into the political part, mm-hmm. which because God has his whole kingdom. Yes. You know, we talk about being a democracy, mm-hmm. but really God has a theocracy. That's right. So that's the political part. Yes. Economic, you know, he has prosperity planned for us that's in right. all areas, whether it be money, um, our families, mm-hmm. whatever. Psychological, the mind, mm-hmm. which is what he's after, mm-hmm. our mind and how we think. And then the military forces, mm-hmm. spiritual warfare. Yeah, yeah. So all of that is what God is giving us a strategy for. Yeah, yeah. Because the Bible says, what well, we shouldn't be ignorant. Ignorant Satan. of yeah. Satan and his devices. devices. That's right. Now, for the topic, in case anybody's wondering what the title of this is, I called it... Um, what's in your backpack. Mm -hmm. Because when I was talking to the young people at the conference, I um, gave some examples of things that had happened to me as well. But we talked about how the enemy starts when you're young, even when you're in elementary school, when you're in kindergarten, when you're carrying a backpack to school. He's trying to load your backpack, make it heavy with all the things that he's bringing, psychological things, um, hurts, Mm -hmm. pains, the things that would keep you out of God's promise and God out of God's plan for your life. Exactly. Exactly. Then we graduate as we get older and we start carrying a briefcase. We got our stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Then we think we've made it. So we got a rolling bag with, you know, going on trips. We think we made it, you know, got enough money. But his, his desire is to load us down. Yeah. So the strategies. What are some of God's strategies that you see that he has that we can use to attack the enemy? Mm. Good, good, good question. Mm. I think about Genesis, the first chapter where God says uh, to himself, Mm -hmm. to to God the Father speaks to uh, Jesus the Son and Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, and he says, let us make man in our image Mm -hmm. according to our likeness, after our likeness, Mm -hmm. and to know who we are. Right. Because when you talk about a a backpack or a book bag Mm -hmm. that the enemy tries to put things in it, they become a part of our identity. Right. And God says, that's not you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not fearful. I have not given you uh, a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. sound mind. And so so the love of God, Mm -hmm. God provides, once again, we're going back to the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word knowledge is, I used to say this in mental health, knowledge is power. But... I thought about that thing one day, and it was like knowledge is not power no. until you put it to work. So you have knowledge it. plus action, action is power. And God says, I've done it all. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. died on the cross. I've rose again. Now I've given you my word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the word of God is a sword. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a sword for us to fight, to, to let the enemy know who we are. Mm-hmm. But we got to spend time in it gotcha. to know who we are. That's to know right. we are, but he's he's provided that he's, he's already provided, provided that, mm-hmm. and he'll put people in our lives. Mm-hmm. You know, this morning I was talking about it's vital that you have some mentors in your life, some mm-hmm. people, some some what I call generals in Christ. Right. You know, when I I gave my life to Christ when I was 19 years old, mm-hmm. and the Lord just led me to get around women of God mm-hmm. who had the Word in them. Right. A, a, a healthy amount of the word in them. Mm-hmm. And that right there helped me. Oh my God. You're talking yes. about a strategy. Mm-hmm. That was a strategy right there to, for pe- to, you have to let people speak into your lives. You have to. You have to. And when you do that and you can humble yourself, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, right. you can, you can begin to transform. You can begin to transform. And that's really the, the whole gist of it. God wants you to transform to a place of power, dominion and authority but you can only do that by renewing your mind renewing your mind with the word of god you know and i tell kids today your mind is your superpower you know yes. we go around talking about you know spider-man and <laughs> you know all these other folk but your mind is your superpower yes. and you know which is why the bible talks about renewing your mind yeah. because that is the the enemy's battlefield yeah 
if he's going to try to defeat you, he's going to get into your mm-hmm. mind. He's going to get oh, in your Jesus. mind. He's going to start speaking to you. He's going to start, you know, whispering all kind of stuff to mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. But see, the thing that we have to know is that God speaks as well. But exactly. his voice is a still, quiet voice. Exactly. And see, and that's when the devil uses the tactic of distraction. Mm-hmm. Because if you are so distracted and so busy, you can't hear that voice. Exactly. And that's what he's counting on. Exactly. And so so the enemy doesn't mind God having a purpose and plan for you. You know, that's, that's right. that he doesn't mind that. <laughs> he he doesn't mind that God has put greatness in us. Exactly. His strategy or his his scheme is mm-hmm. to keep you from knowing that. Yes. And accessing and, and accessing <laughs> you, the things that that God has for you so that you won't know he knows how great we are. Mm-hmm. He knows the purpose and the plan. Yes. And he doesn't want us, us to, to know it. And so <laughs> we have to be aware. Now, some strategies I talked about, I looked at, I said, um, one is to learn from your mistakes. Oh, that's good. Get up and do something. Yes. Because what does he try to do? He tries to knock us down. Mm-hmm. But what does the Bible say? We fall down, but we get we up. We get up. But the enemy doesn't want you to get up. That's right. He wants you to feel like. You can't get up. Exactly. Have you ever had any experiences where where the enemy tried to hold you down, put you down, knock you down, keep you down? Lots of them. <laughs> you know. You know. I remember uh, being in school um, in the fifth grade, mm-hmm. and in the fifth grade, I was bullied. We went mm-hmm. to a new school, and you know, I was told I was stupid, I was fat, I was ugly, mm-hmm. and at at one point. I believed a lie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and began to operate as thus. But then, um, once again, having some older people in my life to to love on me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and to um, share with me that that's not who you are. Right. Then I had to I had to get up from that place. Mm-hmm. You know, fear, guilt, and shame. Those are three things that will hold you down right. if you don't know the truth mm-hmm. and if you don't fight to get up. Right. Um, I've made plenty of mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, but knowing the word of God is so key because, because God says when you sin, mm-hmm. he says you have an advocate. Jesus Christ says I'm your advocate. You have mm-hmm. an advocate with the Father. Right. Confess your sins. He says, and I'm faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Right. So when I when I sin, mm-hmm. I quickly humble myself and I quickly repent. Mm-hmm. I tell God all about it. Tell God and I tell God. on myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because if I don't, sometimes I'll share it with, with someone who's involved. If it's my husband, just say, you know, I just was angry and I and I because anger was one of my things. I don't know mm-hmm. about I don't know about nobody else. Mm-hmm. But anger was one of my things that right. God had to break me through, break break me out of. Mm-hmm. And so whenever I would get angry and I would fall short, mm-hmm. I had to confess that thing. Mm-hmm. I had mm-hmm. to get back up. Get back. Up. I had to get back up and, and keep that's it the moving. Key. That's the key. That's the key. Get back up, and He will beat you up oh, so yes. bad when you fall, because He makes you want to just wallow. Yes. Just stay down there. Have a pity party. Send out invitations, you know, (laughs) you know, send them out, invite other people to come, you know, because misery loves company. And the Bible says the hell is enlarging every day. Yeah. And so he wants to you to invite people. He wants some other people to come to your pity party and not know the truth. Now, another thing it said, it said, um, it said, this was Edison. Edison said, don't call it a failure. Call it an education. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I I like that because to me what God revealed was He said I can work all things together for good. Yes. That's so right. it's an education. So He'll take a little of this and a little of that. Right. Your mistakes, you know, your shame, your guilt, whatever you got, He'll pull it together, and yeah. it works out in your favor. Yeah, you learn from it. Mm-hmm. You learn and from you get it. Get stronger. Get stronger, and you get to share it. Yes, and you get to share it. And you get to share it and, and, help, share it and help somebody That's else. So. True. so there's something else I said, and I saw. It said, there's an in, entire industry built around your making mistakes. Mm. The eraser industry. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> they knew that when we start writing stuff, uh-huh. we're going to be making mistakes. Wow. Yeah, and we're going to have to 
erase those things. That's right. I love it. Same thing <laughs> in life. You know, you're going to be making mistakes. But um, what we have to do is, uh, oh, but when we make mistakes, what we're going to have to do is when God throws them into the sea of forgetfulness, yeah, mm -hmm. and he's erasing those yes. things. And they stay erased if we don't go back and keep doing the same thing. Exactly. So when we repent, that means we're turning from those things mm -hmm. and we're not going back to those things. Exactly. Now, another thing, and I want you to talk a little bit about this, it says um, a strategy is God's dependability and his faithfulness. Mm. A strategy we can use against the enemy. God's faithfulness. His faithfulness. Oh, I love this. And dependability. And his dependability. <laughs> well, that, mm -hmm. that, what comes to my mind is those mm -hmm. two houses that I was talking about earlier mm -hmm. this morning. You know, the Bible, Jesus tells a story about two houses. A man that built his house on the sand. Right. And another man who built his house on a rock. Mm -hmm. A firm foundation. Mm -hmm. And our lives is like a house being built. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so when we build our how, houses on the truth. The truth. Because Jesus says, I am the way, the, the truth, truth mm -hmm. and the life. Right. And so he says, he says, build your house. Let your house be built mm -hmm. on truth. Right. Because I'm dependable. Man will f fail you. He will. Uh, I think I heard, I think I heard a preacher say this morning that we, God caused us to have a place in him that we could depend on because he knew mm -hmm. that man in a body in mm -hmm. a physical body, we mm -hmm. couldn't always depend on. Right. But we can always depend on we God. We can depend on God. We can always depend on him. Mm -hmm. And so and so the Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And forevermore. The older generation used to sing a song, Have You Tried Jesus? He's all he's right. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. <laughs> why? Mm -hmm. Why? 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 Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's mm -hmm. a sure foundation. Mm -hmm. He won't let you down. He is the one who will pick you up if you will allow him. Mm -hmm. He will turn your situation around, and he will move you forward. When you mess up and make mistakes, he's not pointing the finger right. and, and condemning you like the enemy does because mm -hmm. the enemy condemns and beats us up. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him mm -hmm. might be saved. God's might concerned saved. about our salvation. He he's is. Concerned. Now, let's go into some of the the schemers um, mm -hmm. and the schemes before we run out of time. Okay. Um, it said a schemer Ooh. is a person who is involved in making secret or underhanded plans. <laughs> Some of the synonyms for that, plotter, mm. conspirator, Mach Machiavellian, and a mm -hmm. Machiavellian person is somebody that's cunning, scheming, unscrupulous, mm -hmm. especially in politics. And I just love that politics part because, you know, we always think in terms of democracy, yeah. but it's a theocracy. Come on, you know, now. it's a theocracy, and if we live as though we we're in a theocracy, we wouldn't run into so many problems. Exactly. Um, and then it's a colluder mm. when people cooperate in a secret or unlawful way in order to deceive or gain advantage over others. Isn't that what he does when he yes. uses, because the Bible says we fight not, we wrestle not what? Against, against flesh, flesh and blood. blood. Yeah. yeah, and so he makes us look at the flesh and blood thinking that that's who is colluding against mm -hmm. us when it's really Satan and his little demons and his little imps and all the folk that he's using people to carry out his plans. Exactly. And so... In terms of being a schemer, you brought it home a while ago when you mm -hmm. said he's it's a liar. He's a liar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's been a liar since, since the very beginning. That's right. That's he's right. been a liar. He's the father of lies. And so um, one of the examples I used mm -hmm. on the weekend was there was a packaging. It's called One Smart Cookie mm -hmm. that is used um, with a prophylactic, mm -hmm. and it has a cookie on the front. Okay. to make you think that you're being a very smart cookie mm -hmm. when you use them. But now, we talk about what? That we should not be engaging in sex um, without marriage, mm -hmm. and um, especially as teenagers, because we know that mentally and emotionally, they're not ready. Not ready, exactly. But if you're made to feel empowered, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. then... Um, 
that's one of the enemy's schemes. Exactly. He uses other schemes on television where he shows us um, images of certain people and what they should look like and what we should look like. So what are some other schemes that you can think of? um, And we're going to do a follow-up because you got to come back because there's no way we could talk about all this (laughs) today. But what are some of the schemes that you um, can think of, Mm -hmm. especially that he uses for our young people today? Yeah. One, one that I think about even as a child growing up mm-hmm. um, is where he gets you once again to believe a lie. Mm-hmm. And the lie, I'm thinking personally for me, um, because as a child I was sexually abused. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I held it in. Mm-hmm. And I didn't tell anyone. Mm-hmm. And I suppressed it and literally forgot about it. It was buried mm-hmm. until about the age of 16. And at the age of 16, I had a physical attack in my body. Mm-hmm. I think that was the onset of Crohn's disease. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Went to the hospital, and you know how the doctors probe and ask you 50, 11 questions. Right, you right. Know? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know that's not proper English, y'all, but, 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 but they ask you all these questions, and it jarred mm-hmm. flashbacks. Mm-hmm. And I began to have flashbacks um, of me being uh, sexually abused, and it was four years straight by two different molesters. Mm-hmm. So when all of the memories came back, All of a sudden, there was a voice. Mm -hmm. And see, this is why one of his schemes is ignorance. He knows if you're ignorant, Mm -hmm. you 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 are your your mind is a it's a field for him to just play on. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so he began to say to me, "It was your fault. You Mm -hmm. wanted it. You liked it. Mm -hmm. It was your fault." Mm -hmm. And you guys, the coat of shame for the next three years, Mm -hmm. from 16 to 19, Mm -hmm. it began to just where on my mind it just began to consume me and I began to believe that lie and guilt shame and fear just shut my mouth I was afraid I was Mm -hmm. afraid to share it Mm -hmm. um I was afraid um how people would look at me Mm -hmm. that people would reject me Mm -hmm. um but this is all the voice of the enemy in my mind right so that's a scheme and made you out and to to take take you out out. exactly yeah and then see you mentioned also um even with Crohn's disease Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of times, or sometimes, physical attacks on our body are a result of yeah. underlying things. Underlying you know, issues. things that um, either we have suppressed, yes. like you said, or things that we have ruminated about and just went over and over and over in mm-hmm. our minds mm-hmm. about. Oh, that's good. And there are things that the enemy will use to attack your physical body. Yeah. Because he doesn't care how he takes you out, whether it's with your mind, your body, or whatever. He just doesn't want you to accomplish God's purpose and plan That's right. for your life. So if he has to literally kill you physically, the, the word mm-hmm. says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, we know that he comes to destroy your plans, your, your, mm-hmm. your um, vision that God has given you, mm-hmm. all those things. But if he has to literally kill you, he'll do that too. That's he will right. take you out. That's right. But the thing that I tell young people, and I told them this weekend, not only is he after you, but he is also after your children. Yes. And your children's children. That's right. And your children's children's children. Come on now. And on for generations because God is a generational God. That's the nations in you. That's the right. nations are in you. <laughs> That's right. And so if he kills you, come on. He gets you to believe these lies. He gets you to be deceived. Gets your parents deceived so that they don't even know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Then he can kill out a whole generation. And see he's patient. Oh, oh yes. Oh he can wait now. Yeah. He can wait. wait you out. That's He'll right. wait you out because mm-hmm. he knows, you know, that, for instance, with one girl or one suicide or one whatever, mm-hmm. he's literally killed, I don't know how many people, just by that one death. Yeah. Yeah. Yet, with God, when he gives us a new life, yeah. a rebirth, then we are birthing more people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're birthing more That's right. people. That's right. That's and right. And we are enlarging God's territory. Ooh. And so that's what we have to look at. We have to look at the difference in how the enemy plays. And he doesn't play fair. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear young people say all the time, that's just not fair. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> Life is not fair. Life <laughs> is not fair. That's right. Nobody ever said that it would be. That's right. That's Nobody right. said that it would be. Show me in the Bible one verse that said life is fair. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, God talks about how we will cast our cares on him, how he'll, you know, deliver us and all these things. But he had never said we won't go through things. That's right. <laughs> he had never said that. So we're coming to the end of our time. Trish, it's just been so rich. And yes. we're going to have to continue this because yes. there's so much more that we need to cover. And I am willing to yes. do that if you're yes. willing to come back. I am. Because, yes. number one, it is up to us to, like you said, not have people ignorant, Yes. to educate people, to let people know because um, people really don't think this way. Yeah, and I'm yeah. glad I'm glad that you want to dive into this more mm-hmm. because uh, the Lord put in my spirit back in uh, probably about six months ago mm-hmm. um, to write a book called The Chess Move of Love. Wow. And, it's, and, the, and the subtitle is Experiencing Divine Love, Breaking the Chains of Defeat. Why? Because... Jesus is our chess champion, and mm-hmm. the enemy is that schemer right. who wants to take us out. So this is is, is exactly mm-hmm. um, the kind of knowledge that God wants to just take the scales off of people's eyes so it they really can be is. set free. And, you know, God's just, just moving. He's he's so strategic, too, because mm-hmm. there's some things I've been wanting to write and get mm-hmm. out there. So, you know, who knows? We can maybe Ooh, collaborate on. on some stuff. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And get, the, get this. Because my thing is I want to give that devil a black eye. Yes. Beat him up and Come let on. him be seen Whew. for the defeated foe that he is. is. Because he wants people to think he has power and that mm-hmm. he's all powerful. But he only has the power that we give to him. That's right. He only has the power that we give to him. Exactly. So I think my time is up. Um, But we have been having an awesome discussion here. And I look forward. um, Maybe you got some time next week. Maybe we can continue um, next week um, while it's fresh on everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. If you want further information, you can contact me at allthingscanady at gmail.com. And I think what we may do is put together maybe a little leaflet or something with some basic stuff until the book comes out. Um, because we would not have you ignorant to the enemy's yes. devices. Yes. So until next week, you all continue to fight the enemy. Yes. Continue to be aware of what's going on. Continue to educate your children. Mm-hmm. And continue to be obedient to the word of God. Apply wisdom to your life. And I promise you, your life will be successful. So until next week, be blessed. This ain't no ordinary. Oh, girl, for experience. I love saying that this is my life. Hope and all things Canada with his wife. Mm-hmm.